This is Twit. Falcon 9 launch failed, which almost never happens. What happened? Yeah, yeah. So this is a really interesting one. It's actually happened late last night. Uh, and so I thought it was it'd be good to, to write about. But uh, so SpaceX was launching their latest batch of uh, Starlink satellites. I think they call it 10-9 or something like that. And uh, and during uh, during the launch, when you know they, they're they're going to restart the uh, uh, the upper stage, something happened. They uh, Elon Musk said that they had a, a an engine RUD for reasons currently unknown. Uh, RUD is SpaceX talk for rapid unscheduled disassembly. It means the engine exploded. Exploded, and, right? Yeah, and uh, and so they're trying to figure out what happened. Um, now they did say that they're they're they had twenty or so Starlink satellites. They did say that the that they were deployed, but they're they're in the wrong orbit. The orbit's too low for for uh, uh, for like a regular. Uh, flight. Then they had contacted, I think, five of them uh, at that time, uh, and they were trying to see if they could salvage them. But it doesn't look good uh, f- for them. So uh, the reason <laughs> that, that I kind of pushed some of the other headlines that you had selected down is because they were talking about different SpaceX uh, 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 flights and whatnot, and everything is tabled now. The FAA is investigating this with SpaceX. Uh, SpaceX. I mean, this is the Falcon Nine. SpaceX has workhorse rocket it wasn't like a launch abort they had an in-flight failure they haven't had an in-flight failure of a, of a falcon 9 since what 2015 right early Something on like yeah that. yeah yeah i mean there 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 was there was the the nasa cargo launch uh 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 loss and then there was the uh the the, the pad explosion one that they had the failure uh and those mm-hmm. are the two right uh so so no launches and you know spacex is 60 plus launches into the year. Uh, this is going to be a, a, a big hit if they can uh, get get you know the, the bottom of it quickly uh, because they've been launching these Falcon Nines like what, what twice three times a week uh, and they were supposed to launch the Polaris Dawn mission at the end of this month, July 31st. That's the Jared Isaacman flight with the private spacewalk. That's probably going to be slowed until they can figure out what's going on with this upper stage as well. Now. Uh- the booster had probably be, been reused a bunch of times, but it's worth pointing out that the upper stages are not reused for obvious reasons. Yeah. So this wasn't a used engine. This was no. A brand this new was a brand new, a brand yeah. new upper stage engine. So uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean that, that's the first thing that I think about, right? When I hear about an in-flight failure, oh, it must have been the old used in, uh, uh, booster. No, not the case. This brand new upper stage. Something happened, uh, you know, uh, uh, while you know after they had gotten into orbit, uh, that led to this failure and. They're going to want to know what caused that because these mm. these are new on every single flight. There was a lot of ice you can see in camera views from the engine. We don't know if that's part of the issue or not, if they had a leak or whatever, but we're going to find out more, I guess, as this investigation goes on. And this was a Cape launch or Vandenberg? Uh, I believe this was a Vandenberg Space Force launch. Yes. Hmm. Okay. All right, moving on. Tell us about the Cosmic Penguin. Because it's so cute. Yes. It's so cute. I this, is a, like that. this is another really, uh, uh, really a recent one because it just got released today. So as you and I are speaking, Rod, we are celebrating da, 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 the second anniversary of the James Webb Space Telescope's first photo uh, that was released a couple of years ago. And in honor of that, uh, NASA has released a new photo. Uh, it is it is their, their penguin and the egg, it is an object called ARP, uh, I, guess, I guess we can call it ARP, right? Uh, 142, and it's uh, it's these two interacting galaxies that are about 326 million light years away, and it looks like a papa penguin pushing uh, its egg along, you know, in, in Antarctica. It looks, it looks like adorable. Let's share it for everybody, aww. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> um, and and it's not like it's a new object. It's something that they, we've seen before. It's in the constellation Hydra. Um, but this was I think what it they looks had. like a seahorse. Yeah, I could see that too, or a hummingbird, right? But yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah it, it kind of, it kind of looks like that too. Um, An incredible picture, though. Wow. Yeah, and and this is the uh, the most detailed view that we've ever seen of these interacting uh, galaxies, and and while it looks adorable. And, and cute to us, uh, scientists can get a lot of information about how galaxies uh, interact with each other, how they change because of those uh, those interactions, and then how that could have you know uh, uh, lead to uh, different types of star development and and whatnot over time. And so it's really interesting. And of course, the fact that it's an adorable penguin 
just gets people super excited about what else James Webb can see. So, uh, so yeah, we are this is <laughs> suckers for anthropomorphizing things. Things that look like other things are like the favorite, the, my, one of my favorite things to write about at space.com. So, <laughs> well, and the idea that because it's cute, it, it is necessarily non-fatal and that's not always the case. Yeah. Yeah. And this isn't like, this isn't like this, this is, we're talking about a pretty violent cr crash between two galaxies right. that created this. And it's not like, it's a fast thing. It's been going on uh, between 25 and 75 million years. Uh, this, this is when it, when it started uh, and it used to be like a spiral shape uh, galaxy. Uh, and, and so now this is what we've got. Wow. Well, let's hope that doesn't happen here. <laughs> And hey, it's time. Drum roll, please. Actually, we should have a car goofy carousel music. <laughs> it's time for the Starliner update. When will yeah. Starliner come home? Yeah, come home, when? Starliner come home. <laughs> when? NASA and Boeing still don't know. There was a press conference uh, right. on Wednesday uh, of, of this week uh, that where where NASA, and I quote, uh, NASA's Steve Stitch says, <clears throat> we're taking our time on the ground to go through the data before we decide on the return opportunity. So they're still waiting right now. And it doesn't seem like it's an issue about the thrusters or not, that the reviews are done. They're just waiting to, to kind of get through uh, a, a few other things uh, uh, that are going on. There's a lot of traffic at the space station. The astronauts are helping out a lot uh, for by performing extra tasks and whatnot while they're up there. And, uh, and, you know, while, while Boeing still wants to know like what caused the helium leaks and the thruster problems, uh, they just haven't cleared it for departure yet. So that's the latest, you know, the astronauts though, did have a press conference, uh, uh Sonny Williams and Butch Wilmore, where they said they're really confident in the spacecraft, which is nice to see. Uh, and that they, they're pretty sure that it would get them home. NASA has said repeatedly and Boeing that if they had to leave because of an emergency or whatever, they could leave on the spacecraft today. So, uh, so they're not too worried ab about that, so, but it's just weird that, you know, every week there's another delay, you know, they just keep saying that they're not going to say when. Now, from this this briefing, uh, Boeing and NASA do say that they're looking at like the August time frame, like mid August, like that, that's kind of at that forty five day uh, 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 target or whatnot uh, for, for it. Uh, but they, they they're not going to pick a date at this point in time. Uh, there is uh, another flight that's planned though, the Crew Nine uh, Falcon launch uh, to develop a new crew to the space station. That you know, that timing, they wanted to bring them down before crew nine gets there. Cause that's another four astronauts. Uh, so you're looking at that kind of weird traffic schedule that crew nine launch though, like we just talked about could be disrupted by the investigation into the Falcon nine, uh, uh launch failure mm, too. Yeah. So, so there's a lot of moving parts right now, uh, about all of these things, uh, that we're, we're, we're trying to see how they, how they fit together. Now I will say well, though, that, that, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say really quickly, it's just really important to keep in mind that Boeing eventually needs to have these Starliners stay on the space station for six months because that's an increment, uh, uh, an average increment flight. However, this was supposed to be an eight day flight and we're this like, wasn't, what? Yeah, that. Test, right? <laughs> this is, so, and, but you know, when, when demo two launched and SpaceX's first crewed flight launched uh, two astronauts to the space station, they ended up staying for two months. Um, that, but that extension was always a possibility. Uh, that was only supposed to be like a, like a week or so. And then they extended it. And those astronauts were, were glad as well to get the time on board. I'm sure Sonny and Butch are having the time of their lives, uh, you know, planning for a week and, and getting to stay for a month. Well, I think I have a name for the next spacecraft they send up, uh, Boeing. We'll call it ILIR. Just indefinite launch, indefinite return since indefinite. <laughs> actually, we can just call it indefinite since that seems to be associated with it. Okay, enough, enough hacking. Hey, if you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out This Week in Space. You can find us on your favorite podcast app or see the link in the description below. See you there. <laughs>